Hello everybody. So a question we get asked quite a lot is, can I make a living from writing film, television, game music, if I live just about anywhere in the world? I mean, imagine you live somewhere absolutely gorgeous like this, and can I still be a film, television, or games composer? The great news is, yes you can. Um, there's a number of caveats to that, but basically, particularly when you're starting off, you absolutely can live anywhere. There's two reasons for this. One is, that you are somebody else's local composer. Put in your place and film producer or film production or video production, uh, name of your place and that, into Google. Is there video production in Greenland? I don't know. There is going to be some form of production there and you'll be the local composer. So rather than going to a library or going to somebody in the big city, they'll go to you because you need to make friends with the local production companies. And then ask yourself, why haven't I made friends with these people? because they're going to prefer to work with you than work with somebody uh, remotely from miles and miles away. So they're in the same boat that you are. So local production is often a great source of your getting a foot in the door, foot on the ladder, being able to start trading up. Try it as soon as you finish watching this video and you push the subscribe button, of course. The other reason is remote working. It is increasingly plausible for people to live absolutely anywhere in the world and to contribute to fairly significant um, film, television and games productions. But um, as long as you are prepared to travel, what you can't do is just sit in your house and expect to be able to do absolutely everything online um, without ever meeting your client because it will become very difficult to, make, to build the relationships that your career will rely on if you're not ever able to travel to meet people and go and shake them warmly by the hand and sit down and have a cup of coffee. So you will need to travel to build uh, those relationships with your clients. You will need to travel to film conferences, film festivals, things like that, to network and make friends because although you can absolutely pitch for work online, it is so much more effective if you do it face to face. So most people would suggest that the most effective marketing you do is getting on a plane and going to a film festival or a TV conference or, or a games conference or something like that. But once you've got that out of the way, um, you can, most clients don't actually care where you are. Also, on a lot of projects, the clients themselves are all over the shop. There may be a producer in America, a production company in India, another one. You know, they're, all, they're all working remotely. And so remote working becomes a really big thing. And that does mean you can pack up a portable set of kit and work somewhere lovely like this or you can be based in a studio in the Arctic Circle, it doesn't really matter. But you do need an absolutely bomb-proof uh, internet connection. If you don't have a really fast, really reliable <coughs> internet connection, you will run into trouble because the moment your internet lets you down during a, a, a really important video meeting, suddenly that's a really good reason why the producer should be using a local composer. Uh, the moment you can't manage to upload or download a file, uh, that becomes a really good reason why uh, they should be using somebody local. I remember when we were first working on some Disney stuff, they have this really sort of super duper media server and it just, the software just wasn't working for us. And so we got in touch with their technical support people and they said, Jer, what's your um, internet speed? What's your download speed? And I said, we said, uh, one and he said oh what, what what 100 megabits i said no one those were the days before we had fiber and he went oh you could almost hear him dropping the phone and sort of rolling around the floor in fits of hysterical laughter now now we have fiber and it's absolutely thing but you have to have that internet speed so it is just never a question which enters their mind you know why am i working with this person when i Obviously, you need to have systems in place to deal with uploading and downloading files. Um, that's not normally a problem, but it can be a problem for people living in, uh, for example, in China and some parts of the Middle East, where there are restrictions on file transfer, and that can cause you uh, difficulty. But you need all this in place before you start. Um, when I first started, for example, working on um, animated feature films for Marvel, I took some remote gear, um, portable kit, three laptops. Oh, there's a pelican flying over. I'm not sure if you're going to see that. Bye, pelican. <laughs> Remote working at its best. So I take three laptops and I set up in the boardroom 
and I load the stuff up and I start playing some stuff. And as soon as they saw it all works, they had their bit of input. They didn't care where in the world I was going to be when I was actually doing the writing. So that worked really well for me. I work on uh, animated stuff in particular all over the world with people in Australia, uh, China, India, uh, Europe, lots here in the United States. And it works seamlessly as long as I'm prepared to put in the effort and do the traveling and going and see them, meet up with them, and I've got all the other bits and pieces in place. Now, where it doesn't work is when your career really takes off and you're working on really high-end uh, films and television production in particular, where you're gonna need almost daily contact with the production office, then it becomes very difficult. For example, British composers working on big American films will get shipped out to Los Angeles, particularly for the last bit, where they need constant feedback. They just have to be there. That's why most big film and television composers are based in Los Angeles, New York or London, but particularly uh, in Los Angeles, where so much of the film and television production is going on. So the other problem is with uh, working anywhere, as soon as your business gets big enough that you need an assistant, hiring staff can be very difficult if you're not in one of these big centers. Because it makes sense, because if, you, you know, if you set out in life wanting to be a composer's assistant, <clears throat> the only places you're gonna find jobs, for the most part, are gonna be the big centers. You know, places like London, New York, and particularly Los Angeles. And therefore, those people who are qualified to do that job are very reluctant to move very far away from Los Angeles. Even here, which is two hours uh, south of um, LA, you would find it much harder than you were to, to recruit staff than you would in the middle of um, the metropolis where it's all going on. So those are the, the downsides. So if you're going to run a really big business, if you're going to do really well, if you're going to take on uh, really large films and big uh, network episodic television, you probably need to be in the centre of the city. But for most people, particularly starting out and maintaining a really cool lifestyle, uh, you can travel the world with your portable kit, you can do all those kind of things, then absolutely you can live in somewhere as gorgeous as this and still make a living as a film and television composer. What a problem to have, you know, so you go and work for six months or whatever, working like an absolute maniac, earning zillions of pounds, and then you want to buy an absolutely fantastic house like this and looking at the pelicans flying around and all that kind of thing, and you spend your downtime here. So what are you complaining about? Look, that's all I've got for you today. We will be doing another one on remote working because I think this is a really interesting subject and there's a lot more detail I could go into about actually how you pull, pull it off and do the remote working thing. Please, if you've enjoyed this, click the subscribe button, stay in touch. Um, there's probably some sort of free thing to download underneath this video. So why don't you click that as well? And um, I look forward to bringing you yet more insights and doing some live scoring and all that kind of thing uh, very soon. So thank you very much for your company.